While Pontiac met its untimely demise in 2010, it left behind an automotive legacy that has stood the test of time. From the famous Pontiac Trans Ams that dominated pop culture to the Pontiac GTO, which is widely regarded as the car that truly started the muscle car era. Pontiac's heavy hitters like these are celebrated and enjoyed by enthusiasts around the globe to this very day. However, back in 1961, before the GTO and before the Firebird, Pontiac was working on what might have been the most fascinating car to come out of Detroit in the 1960s. A car with a rear-mounted transaxle, a fully independent rear suspension, near-perfect 50-50 weight distribution, and a V8 or four-cylinder power plant. A car with these specs would have caused a storm across the automotive world. But this car wasn't just some concept car pipe dream. They actually built it. And the car they built was the 1961 to 1963 Pontiac Tempest. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Rare Cars. This is the channel where we dive into the past and explore some of the rarest and most iconic vehicles of all time. If you want to see more short-form documentaries on unique cars like the Pontiac Tempest or even the Jensen Interceptor, then make sure you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel. As of right now, only about 2% of our viewers are actually subscribed, and every subscriber helps us build our community. Now, with that intro out of the way, let's get into the history of the 1961 to 1963 Pontiac Tempest. The Pontiac that built the Tempest in 1961 was a very different Pontiac than the one that died a death of a thousand cuts in 2010. Pontiac used to be the real risk takers at GM, and they had earned the reputation as essentially being GM's automotive version of a Bell Labs. Pontiac, behind the scenes, was pushing innovation for the entire General Motors conglomerate with their design and engineering. And those gambles that Pontiac were taking would pay off with the Tempest. See, in the late 1950s, a little car by the name of the Volkswagen Beetle was taking the world by storm, and American automakers swung into action to hastily create their own compact cars to try and carve out a sliver of the market for themselves so that the Beetle wouldn't take it all. Ford created the Falcon, Chrysler created the Valiant, and, well, GM created the rear-engine air-cooled Corvair as essentially a direct competitor to the Beetle, and their intent was to rebadge that car for Pontiac to sell as the Pontiac Polaris. Pontiac, however, wanted absolutely nothing to do with that. Pontiac as a brand was upmarket from Chevrolet. They produced a more premium automobile. And the problem with this idea of the Corvair being offered as a premium Pontiac is best explained by Pontiac's general manager at the time, who said, The Corvair is a rear-engine air-cooled car. How do I make it different? There's no grill to be restyled, and the engine can't be exchanged for a Pontiac power plant. Therefore, how do I justify the extra $500 to $1,000 added to the price to sell it with a Pontiac nameplate? And, well, he was right. So rather than working with GM to get a different body design for the Corvair, Pontiac's mad scientists did what they did best, and they built something totally different. And the main mad scientist who brought the Tempest to life was none other than a man by the name of John DeLorean. DeLorean and his team at Pontiac wanted to push the boundaries and build something that was truly ahead of its time. Their Tempest would be quick, nimble, fuel efficient, and also have seating for six. They would use the base Corvair chassis, but they would end up changing pretty much everything about it to make it fit their needs. Pontiac increased the wheelbase from 108 inches to 112 inches, and they redesigned part of the chassis to now be a front-engine powered car compared to the Corvair's rear-engine layout. Now, making a Tempest a six-seat compact car was one of the most interesting challenges that DeLorean and his team would face. They were able to do this by mounting the engine in the front of the car and then putting a transaxle gearbox in the rear which was connected by a three-quarter inch wide shaft. This design removed the need for an obtrusive transmission tunnel inside the car as the Tempest would have its transmission housed in the rear. Because of this, they could utilize essentially a totally flat floor pan in the car to create two rows of bench seats to seat six adults. The Tempests would utilize a modified version of the Corvair's independent rear suspension in an effort to save on development costs which had largely been eaten up by the chassis revisions for the Tempest and their new engine design. Yes, not only did the Tempest get a crazy revised Corvair chassis, but they also got a new engine too. A 195 cubic inch 
inline four-cylinder. DeLorean wanted to go with a four-cylinder engine to keep the car light while also adding to its fuel efficiency. This car was so unbelievably different than anything else that was coming out from an American automaker at the time. And this four-cylinder engine was equally as unique. Pontiac took their 389 cubic inch V8 and they literally cut off one bank of cylinders and created their inline four cylinder that they affectionately called the Trophy 4. The Trophy 4 engine, because it was based on a 389, shared lots of parts with the V8, like the pistons, the rods, the heads, and a lot of other stuff. This four-cylinder in the Tempest was available with the super basic 110 horsepower and 190 foot-pound of torque economy version as the base model, with other slightly more modified versions leading up to the 155 horsepower and 215 foot-pounds of torque top trim Trophy 4 with an aggressive cam and a four-barrel carburetor. These Trophy 4-powered Tempests could do 0 to 60 in about 10.5 seconds when paired with a set of 373 rear gears and a manual transmission. So these definitely were not a blisteringly fast car, but in its class, they were pretty quick. You could also option your Tempest with a Buick 215 cubic inch V8 that made about 185 horsepower. A three-speed manual or automatic transmission were available in the Tempest. The 61 and 62 Pontiac Tempests were largely the same minus some exterior revisions to the front end of the cars. 1963 though, well, that was a much different story. For the last model year of these Corvair-based Tempests, Pontiac threw the kitchen sink at this car. They changed everything. They stretched the length of the car 5 inches and made the car just about 2 inches wider. The more tame and unassuming styling of the 61 and 62 Tempests was replaced with a more squared off and muscular look for 1963, which made sense considering the new engine that was available, Pontiac for the 1963 model year of the Tempest now offered their own 326 cubic inch V8, which made 260 horsepower and 350 foot-pounds of torque, making this the new top engine trim, actually replacing the 215 Buick and offering about 100 horsepower more than the Trophy 4 did. And even crazier than the 326 powered Tempests were the 421 cubic inch V8 powered Super Duty Tempests of which they made just six of for 1963. The 421 Super Duty cars were purpose built for super stock drag racing. Under the hood, the super stock 421s were no joke. 405 horsepower and 425 foot pounds of torque thanks to their hopped up 421 Pontiac motors. These super stock cars also featured a full lightened aluminum front end to save on weight. And even crazier than that, these super stock cars still retained the Pontiac transaxle in the rear, making these cars the true pinnacle of the Pontiac Tempest. The 1963 Pontiac Tempest in specific also has a very cool pop culture reference to its unique independent rear suspension in the 1992 movie My Cousin Vinny. But 1963 would end up being the final send-off for this era of Pontiac Tempests. With the more complex transaxle design proving to be the ultimate nail in the coffin for the car, GM building thousands and thousands of cars every week, they make their money on the economies of scale. The more cars that use the same core parts, the better and the more efficient they could be with their production line, which means they would make more money. With the Tempest really being out in right field all by itself with its transaxle design, and shops complaining that it was harder to fix them because they were different than like 98% of cars on the road at the time, the decision was made in 1964 to transition the Tempest onto the more traditional A-body GM platform. In total, from 1961 to 1963, Pontiac built just around 370,000 Tempests. But you'd be hard-pressed to find one of these in good condition today, as it seems over the years, the difficulty to get replacement parts for these Tempests meant that many of them never got the care they truly deserve and ended up rotting away. 1964 and newer Pontiac Tempests are a much more common sight to see than these original 61 to 63 cars. Which is unfortunate because this initial run of Pontiac Tempest were some of the most unique cars ever built by GM, period. And today, a car like these early Tempests would have never even been built. The idea that a manufacturer inside of the GM umbrella 
would go ahead and substantially modify an existing product to make something really new that had parts that were absolutely not interchangeable with other cars in the GM lineup is just crazy, which is part of what makes these early Pontiac Tempests so interesting. But that is the short history of one of the most underappreciated American cars in history, the 1961 to 1963 Pontiac Tempest. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash the notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.